In this video, I want to show you what happens algebraically when you try to solve a linear system and the answer ends up being no solution or infinite solutions. So we're going to use substitution here and we're going to look for one of these variables that's easy to isolate and it looks like this x right here has a coefficient of 1. So I could subtract 3y from both sides of this equation and get the x all by itself. So I have negative 2 minus 3y. Remember this negative 2 and minus 3y are not like terms. This negative 2 is a constant and this one has a variable. So we cannot combine them. But x equals this expression right here, negative 2 minus 3y. So I'm going to substitute this expression in for x, but in the other equation. And remember that's how we combine the two equations together. So I'm going to have 6 plus 3x, well the value of x that we're going to use is negative 2 minus 3y, and make sure that when you're substituting you always use parentheses, and that equals negative 9y. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute here, so 6 minus 6 minus 9y equals negative 9y. Well our 6's cancel, we have negative 9y equals negative 9y. So if we were to add 9y to both sides, we have 0 equals 0. Okay, well interesting. Well, think back if you will, when you solved equations that had only a single variable, what happened when the variable canceled out and you were left with a true statement, like 0 equals 0? Well, it meant that you had infinite solutions. And the reason you had infinite solutions in that case was because it didn't matter what value you plugged in for x, all the x's ended up canceling out anyway. So what does it mean in this case? Well, in order to have infinite solutions in a system, it means that these two lines happen to be exactly the same two lines. Well, it doesn't look like they're the same, but I would uh, encourage you to go ahead, a little challenge on your own, go ahead and show algebraically that these two lines are the same by putting them both in slope-intercept form or by solving for y in both cases. And here we are in the second example. We're going to solve it by substitution again and using substitution I'm looking for a variable that's easy to isolate. It looks like this y is easy to isolate. It's a negative 1 for a coefficient. So what I'm going to do is just swap these two terms. So when I do that, the 8 that's positive on the right side becomes negative on the left side, and this negative y that was on the left becomes positive y on the right. So now I know that y is equivalent to this expression, negative 3x minus 8, and I got that from the first equation. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute this expression, negative 3x minus 8, into y, but of course in the other equation. And in that way, I'm going to combine these two equations. So 5y plus 15x equals 25. So when I plug in what I know is y, negative 3x minus 8 plus 15x equals 25. And again, when you uh, substitute, make sure you're using parentheses. So we'll distribute here, negative 15x minus 40 plus 15x equals 25. Ooh, the negative 15x and the positive 15x cancel. And I'm left with negative 40 equals 25. Well, this seems like a false statement. This is not true at all. Negative 40 does not equal 25. So what happened here is that all of my variables canceled. I'm left with a false statement. So what does that mean? It means this system has no solution. And graphically, what will that look like? Well, remember, if there's no solution, it means that the lines are parallel and they never intersect. So, just like the first example, I would go ahead and challenge you. Go ahead and solve for y in both of these instances. Put both lines in slope-intercept form and show that these are parallel. They have the same slopes but different y-intercepts.